Gospel of the Lord, December 18th, 2013, Matthew 1, 18-24. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being an upright man and wanting to spare her disgrace, decided to leave her quietly. He had made up his mind to do this when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from, his, from their sins. Now. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Look, the virgin is with child, and will give birth to a son whom they will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are able to get into this intimate relationship, into these intimate feelings, especially of Joseph. This is the reaction of a man, an upright man, but a man nonetheless, when confronted with the mystery of the conception of, of Christ, of Jesus Christ. St. Matthew wants us to understand that Jesus is a true person born from the Virgin Mary in reality, not just an image, as some would like to say. And this is a hard time for Joseph. We can imagine his face we can imagine his reaction, seeing that his wife, a beautiful and immaculate young little girl, whom he had married legally, but had not been living, had not lived with her at all, presented herself somehow, and he realized that she was pregnant the despair. The result of the lack of knowledge, the ignorance, the amazement, all those feelings that troubled the heart and the mind of Joseph. How could this be? She is my wife. I didn't touch her. And now she's pregnant. What happened to this girl? She must have felt deeply. And perhaps he suffered for a few days before coming to this decision. It is only when he decides to forego his own rights. What was his rights? His right was to grab Mary from the hair, perhaps, and drag her to the middle of the village and cry out, she is pregnant, and I who is her husband, I who am her husband, did not touch her. And that would, be, that would have been enough for her to die stoned. He had that right. Joseph had. But when he decided to spare the virgin that disgrace and death and to blame himself the way he was going to live for quietly would make everyone think that he had disgraced her, that he was the one that made her pregnant and then decided to leave her for no reason at all. 
So all the blame would have, would have been on him. And he decided to offer himself like that. That's when the Lord has mercy on him. It is interesting that he does not receive the visitation of the angel of the Lord. Like the virgin, he is not awakened. Not even like Zechariah, the priest of the Lord in the temple. No, Joseph is asleep, and in a dream, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not worry, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. She has conceived from the Holy Spirit, by the force and the strength of the Holy Spirit, from God himself. He, she will give birth to a son. Who could have foretold that but only God? And furthermore, back then, that a woman would be pregnant and just in her first three months or fourth would have been very difficult to foretell whether it was going to be a boy or a girl. But the angel knows, because it is the will of God. And you must name him Jesus, Jesus, because he is the one to save his people from their sins. The name Jesus, Jeshua in Hebrew, is a very special name, which is exactly what it means. It means salvation of God, salvation from God. Now, some theologians would like to say that it is the same root in Hebrew as Joshua. It almost sounds the same, Jeshua. Joshua, but it's not the same. Jehoshua and Jeshua sound different, and even if their root is about the same, in the end, this particular name, this new name, is new because it's it wasn't used with it wasn't used with anyone else. Furthermore, it remains hidden in plain sight through the Old Testament. The angel proceeds and tells him, All this took place so that it will be fulfilled what the Lord has spoken through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin is with child, and she will give birth to a son whom they will call Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, Isaiah, some 600 years before Christ, had foretold that his name was going to be Emmanuel. But on the present time, that name did not came to be. He truly is Emmanuel, Jesus is, because that could be one easily one of his titles. He truly is God with us. Jesus is the Logo Eternal, the Logos Eternal incarnated from Mary the Son and the Only Begotten from the Father before all time came to be, before there was a universe. He is the one that incarnated. And He came to save us. He, a true man, came to show us the way, the love of Father, of the Father. He came to show us obedience, and He came to save us from our sins. And that salvation was hinged on the love and obedience of the Son. His love to the extreme was shown clearly in His passion and death on the cross. The cross and his passion was not exactly a requirement of atonement, but more likely it was, as Cardinal Ratzinger wrote in one of his books, the encounter of our hardened hearts with the soft love of God, that he would God 
would respect our freedom, even to the stream of his own son dying, because we would reject him and prefer ourselves. But just as Isaiah says, he saved many because he took our sins. That's what happened with the Lord. Just as St. Paul says, he who had never committed any sin took all our sins and took them away to his cross. In his cross, he paid for all our sins with his blood. He cleansed us all. Now, that salvation is not automatic. And it's not just on faith alone. It has to be appropriated. And the only way to appropriate this salvation is by loving God back just as He loves you. There is no other way. And it's, just, and it's not just a matter of conscience and imminent love, but the love that is expressed in every day at every moment of your life. Not only with God, but with God exactly through our brothers, through the charities that we do, through all our brothers, where we found Jesus today suffering again. Let us just remember today, as we approach fast, we fastly approach Christmas time, that this child who was born is Jeshua, salvation of God, and Emmanuel, God with us. God bless you all, brothers.